How about, uh, can we just for uh, start off for just a moment here and talk about the uh, Syracuse game? Uh, yeah. Did you uh, did you see any of the? Uh, did you see? Uh, I, I, I saw some of the game. You know, they went down by. I hate to say this, uh, but they went down by like double digits in the second half. Huge comeback. Yeah, I did not see the comeback. I did not see the comeback. Oh, you walked I, I away. Had, I had already given up. Um, I, you know. Well, I, you know what? You know how the you know how the comeback happened. No. Is they went into a, a press. Oh yeah. He went out of the zone. And and they pressed and it completely threw Pittsburgh off. They were they were all over the place. There were turnovers, and Syracuse was fired up. They get to the point where they've tied the game, and immediately Beheim puts him back in the zone mm-hmm. with under a minute to play. And from that point, uh, it gave Pittsburgh a chance to recuperate. So, it's a really tough loss. It's a I tough mean, situation. I, I understand, but and then and then uh, Cooney was sitting. For 14 minutes, and and nobody knew why, because uh, Cooney never sits. And in the whole comeback, Cooney was not a part of the comeback. He was on the bench. And there was six seconds left, the last play of the game. They had to go baseline to baseline. Uh, Cooney comes in. They couldn't get the ball to Benajay, and and um, and Cooney takes the, the three-pointer. And it's almost, you know, how the season comes to an end. It's almost like... Well, you know, Cooney's either hot or he's cold, and he and he took the shot and, well, he, and he w- missed. Was it a half court shot, or did he have? No, a, uh, he was uh, he was pretty much to the top of the key. And you know, that's kind of like the summary of his career at Syracuse. But he had two I seconds mean, left. He and, had and two why? seconds left, and they had a clock problem, so you could not see the clock. The clock wasn't working up on the basket, right? So they had to put the. You know how what happened there? That was yeah. a mess. The first well, they were like uh, it took like ten minutes to get through the first minute of play. And then Jamie, so Jamie Dixon, the coach of Pitt, uh, knows that two three zone all too well. Um, formerly a big, Big East uh, competitor. So again, to your point, Bill, I don't understand why you would go to the, to that for the last minute. And then secondly, well, I, I guess the point is, is that first of all, the zone they were in the entire game, and the zone for Beheim works. Yeah, but just, but why if you're pressing and you've get and you've and you've come back. Like fifteen points. Yeah. There's only there's under a minute left. Why would you switch back to the zone when you tie up and you clearly have them on the ropes? I don't understand why you'd change the strategy there. I'd say you just keep pounding it down their throat, but it's a typical Bayheim. He he loves to you get ahead, what's he do? The first thing he does is goes into a stall and gives the and I mean I, I hate to be, you know, going after Bayheim here on this, but still I just wonder. I wonder what the strategy is there. And why a three? Why not, you know, try and get a play going where he... Well, he wasn't supposed to have the ball. He wasn't supposed to have the ball. And he was supposed to go in for a layup. There's a whole story about how this thing went down. But uh, uh, Cooney wasn't supposed to get the ball. And it was supposed to go to Benajay, and they had it all worked out. And according to Beheim, one player didn't do what he was supposed to do, and it screwed everything up. And the rest of the team just kind of sat there not knowing what to do. Cooney took the ball down, couldn't see the clock, and kind of panicked a little bit and put the ball up. Did uh, did he say who made the error? No, he didn't say. Mm, boy, that's not like Bayheim. It is not like Bayheim. <laughs> and so yesterday there was all the talk about how Syracuse gets in no matter what. Win or lose that game yesterday, Syracuse gets in. Um, I don't know about that. I, I, I You've now lost three in a row. And these are three in a row under Bayheim. Remember, they said that they wouldn't they wouldn't consider, or they would consider the fact that Bayheim wasn't there because of the suspension and all of that. And they really wouldn't use those games to determine uh, for an NCAA berth. But you know, these are this is down the stretch here. You've lost three in a row. You know, I don't know. There, yesterday, if they had won, it would have put them at twenty. That's usually a good gauge, at least for Syracuse, yeah. is to get to twenty wins. I think they've. The last time they went to the NIT, they had 20-plus wins, 21 or so wins, and they still didn't make it. I could be wrong on that stat. but Well, it almost seems like Syracuse gets caught in that uh, where they should have gotten in and don't get in, and Bayheim's always fuming. Uh, and, you know, maybe they won't do well, that he, this I'm, year. Again, I'm not one to get on Bayheim, but, I mean, he complains about every call. You know, he does, yeah. They, if they don't make it to the big tournament, he's complaining. So. Um, beyond the, uh, and, and you know, what a loss for, what a loss for like the bars and the restaurants and all these places that, yeah. that, uh, would have had people in today watching the Syracuse game. 
Oh, well, they're not in it. They would have played what? North Carolina State? So. Yeah. Oh, University of North Univers- Carolina. U- UNC. Um, a debate last night. We'll get into that. Um, and actually, we have Rachel Sutherland coming on in a few minutes to talk about it. The uh, Democratic debate. And again, heated, heated. This was the Spanish debate. So Univision's debate. And some of it was in, uh, some of it was in Spanish. And one of the questions was the biggie. Um, it wasn't, did you see the question? No. The question was, um, if you are indicted, will you step out of the race? Oh, yeah, yeah I did see that. So that's caused a lot of, uh, boy, was that an unfair question, a lot of hoopla. Hillary wouldn't answer the question. Well, and uh, to Sanders' the, credit, he kind of left it aside as well. Yeah, well, he kind of has on that whole email thing whole all thing. along, right? He's really given her a pass on that. So uh, anyway, we'll get to that coming up. 618, Christine has 